What's good, family? Welcome to the Minor Hoops Podcast, show the freshest opinions and views in the world's most beautiful game. And the team is back, and we're talking about Pat Bev being a Laker. That's right. Uh, we're a little bit late, but we gotta let y'all know how we feel about it. Of course, uh, the Lakers uh, have acquired Patrick Beverly in a trade that sends THT and Stanley Johnson to the Jazz. Um, it's got a lot to do with a lot of different people. So we're going to try and break down pretty much all of it as best as we can. So let's get our thoughts out. Pat Bev, Laker means what to you, Laker fan? <laughs> Don't care. More drama. Um, <laughs> it's interesting, entertaining to see, you know, one of the funniest basketball beasts now become teammates uh, in, in Pat Bev and Russell Westbrook. Oh, yeah. Um, Pat Bev and LeBron James having their own relationship separate of that. It doesn't. I don't. I don't care. I don't care. Um, it doesn't <laughs> help us. What, what, how it should help us. Like, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, this wasn't the trade. This wasn't the it. Like, yeah. This is more so. We're talking about this because it's Lakers news, and you got to talk about the Lakers in some kind of capacity. Not because it was a good play for the organization or anything like that. So it wasn't a good play. It, it was just no. It was something to do. It was <laughs> like, let's be real. You fight to have like Taylor Horton Tucker. You yeah. fight to have THT on the team for a couple years, talking about how he's so valuable and he wanted them ones and blah, blah, blah. Talking ones, about man. you, Bron. And <laughs> so you build up all of this, this, this hype around him and his trade value and blah, blah, blah. So there's definitely several different trades that could have been made uh, throughout the past history, like the past two years, that it didn't happen because THT's name was in those trades. Like, for example, the Kyle Lowry trade. Um, that was one of the, mm -hmm. the things that I stopped it. He was like, no, we're not trading Taylor and Tucker. And I'm like, all right, cool, cool, cool. Can't wait to see what he's going to be on the court. Underutilized and not utilized at all on the basketball court this past season, um, regardless of Nick Snacks and bruises and injuries. Um, but we haven't really been able to see his talent showcased at all in a Laker uniform. But he ends up getting traded with Stanley Johnson for Pat Bev. Hey, man. For Pat Bev. Blockbuster. Braun was trying to hustle the league on THT. Which either shows me you don't really believe in him or or you really thought you was gonna get way more out of it. But I don't I don't this Pat Bev trade is like I don't I don't know. I don't think as a Laker fan, I don't care about it. Why are you sleep? Why are you sleeping? I'll say a prayer. <laughs> <laughs> Dramatic. <laughs> Yo, D. <laughs> Jeez. Why are you praying? It's going to be a long season. <laughs> oh, he's crying. <laughs> oh, no. It's going to be a long season, B. Oh, man. It's going to be a long season. Yo. <laughs> Jenny Buss really don't like Braun. <laughs> Nah, nah, I don't think she do. Nah, bro, what do you mean you don't <laughs> think she do? It's obvious. She had to walk back comments about Russell Westbrook being the mo the best player, and she meant most consistent. Yeah, but you know words. <laughs> you know words. I know how words work. Yeah, you know words. You're gonna call somebody else the best player on your team that has LeBron James on it. I want to say this. Yeah. One time, make sure we post this video. Okay. I don't care about anything the Lakers do until Russell Westbrook gets traded. All right. I don't care. As long as he's on the roster, there's no hope for the future. So I do not care. Is the trade, does the trade make some basketball sense? Sure. Pat Ben fits in better next to Braun than Westbrook ever will. That's a given. The fact that we had to give up THT, who we chose over Caruso, who we wouldn't trade for Kyle Lowry, is just hilarious. Absolutely. Is putting the person that wrecked Russell Westbrook's knee in the same locker room as him, literally, like, the, the, as soon as I saw that pop across the headline, I was like, oh, they're abs this is why I think they're going to make him pay him to stay home. Because there's no way they thought that was the smart decision. These two don't just not like each other. They hate each other. I don't care what Pat Bev says from here on out. They 
hate each other. Or at least Russell Westbrook hates Pat Bev. Pat Bev might be somewhat cool with Westbrook because that's just kind of who he is. He's just kind of that person who's just a pit bull and does crazy things. Mm -hmm. But, like, Russell Westbrook generally hates Pat Bev. The man wrecked his knee. Like, we forgot. That was, what was that, seven, eight years ago? Yeah, I didn't forget about it. I wouldn't forgot. Yeah. (laughs) But I feel like the casual NBA fan kind of has forgotten. Like, those that are in the no, know. No, I'm a like, Thunder fan. Remember. I definitely remember. Exactly. Like, Thunder fans kind of remember. <laughs> yeah, Westbrook yeah. fans it, definitely it's remember. It's not covered in the media as it's much, like, but that's because the media is going to try to showcase things differently. Exactly. But, like, the man literally wrecked Westbrook's knee and maybe cost OKC a title. No. I think so. Theoretically. Of course you do, Greg. Theoretically. <laughs> <cost> <laughs> I, I have to think that. He you has have to, to think that. that. I'm I, like, think, uh, I think KD and Westbrook would have choked again. But whatever. So. Hater. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I saw this move made, I was like, oh, yeah, they are officially done with Russell Westbrook in some shape, form, or capacity. If they can't trade him, we're done. Because if you get no assets back for him, so, the roster we have doesn't comp- so contend. So the, the rumors about Darvin Ham thinking about putting Russell Westbrook in. Russell, and- Darvin can think whatever he wants. I, I hope he has a great coaching career. This is a great <laughs> opportunity for him. I hope everything works out as another from a young black coach to an older black coach. Like, Darwin, go for it, bro. Do what you got to do. Make the best out of a bad situation. Facts. There's no way he's going to say what he has to say in front of the camera. There's no way when he walks back into his coach's office that he can legitimately think he can put Westbrook and Pat Bev on the court together and succeed. Mm. There's no way. And if he does, it's literally because the front office told him that's the only choice you have. So now I – and you know what? I've been there. When you have a roster that you know probably can't do it, and you know the pieces don't fit together, and you know what? I'm going to invent an offense today because I have to. I mean, don't, don't. I ain't say no names. You, know, you ain't been coaching that long. People can, can if you look up your resume. You know what? You know what? <laughs> if you can figure out who I'm talking about, that probably means I was right. Oh, man. I mean, that's oh, fair. Man. Beef. If the shoe uh, fit. I've coached fit. If the shoe I, fit. You, y'all can say I've been coaching. I've been coaching about eight years now. I've coached at least 15 to 20 teams. If you can remember that one team I was talking about, there's a reason for it. I'm going to oh, tweet man. about it. Jeez. <laughs> Go follow me. <laughs> Exclusive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think, I think that the Lakers took a step in the right direction today. Well, that day. I think they took a step in the right direction. What does that mean? Um, they got a defensive-minded guard. When you're a thousand steps back from the destination, what does a step in the right direction oh mean? They got a defensive-minded I'm so, I'm so guard. Defensive-minded guard. They got a guy who potentially could make open Pat threes. Man shuffles his feet in Timberlands. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. The beach workout videos. <laughs> like, I don't think I he had on socks on bro. either, man. He he's crazy. Like, at what point do we admit Pat Bev's like defensive thing is overrated? Like, is he a solid defender? Sure. Like, so you don't. He's more of a meme at this point than a great defender, though. He's out there running around, man. He's out there running around. <laughs> so he's so now we got we got two people on our team that should be out there running around. Only difference is one actually tries on defense. Ooh, it's gonna be a lot of cardio this year. So Pat Bev, trick. Trick the Lakers? I don't think he tricked. Like, no. I think the Lakers know what they got. I think they just realized the that's Lakers, a better yeah. alternative than Russell Westbrook. That's that's all I really saw, too, which I don't uh, – I'm not giving up Stanley Johnson and THT for Pat Bev. I thought the I'm whole sorry. goal of the summer was to get younger and more athletic, and we just gave up two of the young wings. One of which played really well for the Lakers last year. Stanley Johnson was okay. <laughs> Stanley Johnson came in no, he late. And, yeah, I, I, and he did his job. The goal of, looked, what, in, looked quite impressive due to the circumstances. Look, man, the goal of the Lakers this season was the, uh, this offseason was the Kyrie Irving. When that didn't happen, it was make it up as you go. <laughs> Dead serious. What when, like. Yeah, when Kyrie and the Nets like imagine, came to that mutual agreement. Imagine the Lakers war room having just Kyrie Irving on the board. Like, <laughs> yes. But, you know what? <laughs> all, the, all the dots but were you know, connected. But, but he you was circled like but you know four the times. Problem, but you know what the problem with that is? The Lakers war room is literally split in half. Because on one side, there's the actual Lakers war room. And then on the other side, it's the clutch war room. So they're never going to be in sync. The clutch room probably wanted Kyrie. The Lakers war room was probably like, we could probably make some smaller moves. Probably put LeBron James back at point guard when he led the league in assists. Maybe try that again because, you know, it worked. Like, we had the best defense in the league that year. But, no, we're not going to try that. No, Kyrie Irving. That's who LeBron wants. Yep. Okay. Yeah. 
That's how it's been working for the Browns career. It ain't good, though. You know why Genie Bus doesn't like him? It's because Clutch Media owns half the offices in that building now. Clutch me getting people paid. I'm over it. Nah, this is... <laughs> this is going to be a bad season. <laughs> this is going to be a bad season, man. I love the Lakers, man. I love the oh, Lakers. Oh, time we get my Kendrick Nunn, baby. Shout out to Kendrick Nunn. I love the Lakers. This is great. For those who who don't know, I'm not a Lakers fan, but these two are. All right, they're huge Lakers fans. I mean, diehards. Um, which is funny because they both see the Lakers differently, but the same at the same the trash. time. Trash. <laughs> we see no, it honestly. I, mean, this is, I knew it was gonna be a bad season when I literally. So saw when they're it. on the same page like this, I just get a I just get a good laugh, yeah. especially when the Lakers are tremendously horrible at doing the one thing they need to do. And that's not mess up a LeBron James run. They can't even do that right. Cleveland had enough sense to do that right the second time around. Um, Miami, that had Pat Riley. Can't give him too many. I mean, hey, it's Pat Riley. But the Lakers, you've had superstars before. You've had superstars before. You know what it looks like to piece a team around a superstar. Not one that wants to control every. Yeah, I was about to say office. this isn't and just I a said superstar. This five years ago, so don't look at me like I'm crazy, Greg. I said this five years ago. I said I don't want LeBron James for this exact same reason that is unfolding before our eyes. So stop <laughs> acting like I'm saying something crazy here. I, I knew what was coming. I knew at best we were gonna win one title, and everything would crater. And now I have to sit here. This is what, this I know as a Laker as Laker Nation, we've kind of started to kind of hit rock bottom, and we've become way too toxic with Westbrook fans and LeBron fans all meshing in the middle here. Mm-hmm. I had to literally watch a thread on Twitter of somebody explaining to me why JTA Juan Toscano Anderson was going to be the difference maker for the Lakers this year. A guy, hey who yo, I saw that joy. <laughs> a guy that couldn't get off Golden State. Bench is now going to be the I difference was like, maker Juan? for the Lakers. Juan? Okay, sure. <laughs> yep. Juan. That is where the fanatical and fan comes from, and I'm over it. So do you think it's the best move if they can't trade Russell Westbrook to make him stay at home? There's been reports about this. Of course, we saw the Houston Rockets do this with John Wall. They paid him $44 million to stay home all season last year. Um. Is it best for the Lakers? Is it best for the Lakers? Yes. It's not best for Russ. If I'm Russ, though, and I do have a choice, I'm not even sitting home. I'm playing. If I want to have a couple more years of how I want to, um, uh, in terms of minutes in the NBA, in terms of the role I'm going to have, if they just pay me to sit this season, I don't think I'm going to ever really be able to recover off that. Like We've had these conversations a couple years ago about Melo, where I was sitting there like almost enraged fighting for him saying that he should have a spot in the league because mm-hmm. I thought he was dealt dirty. But in this sense, it's almost an overwhelming, you can't win with Russell Westbrook kind of feel mm-hmm. that from casuals to analysts to even other sports, uh, uh, basketball players, it's kind of just overseeing unanimous feelings. Like you can't win with him. You can't win with him. You can't win with him. And after a, a bad season, mind you, probably his worst season in his career, in my opinion, last year, but still, Arguably, with the worst team he's had in terms of functioning, mm-hmm. um, even outside of his Dolo OKC days when he just ran everything, um, I think it's definitely in his best interest to be able to play this season, specifically be able to play with the Lakers. Now, they have conflicting interests. That's why I ask you, the Lakers' best interest is to ship him out for whatever you can get back as soon as possible. But his trade value is at a zero. Um. Yeah, the the only option really is whether you're gonna pay him to stay home, and if I don't know how it's gonna necessarily work, but if I have an option in Russ, it's like I'd rather sit on this bench healthy. Because if you can't find me nowhere I can play this year, then I'd rather just try to redeem myself or or the the bad uh social image and and teammate image and play image that I helped create and was thrust upon me last year by LA media. Yeah. Being the scapegoat. I feel for Westbrook because was he scapegoated last year? Absolutely. He took way too much of the blame for things not working out. That's fair. On the same token, I've said for years, yep. you can't win with Russell Westbrook 
as your point guard. You cannot win a championship as Russell Westbrook with your as your point guard. So my opinion of him hasn't changed really at all. The Lakers would be better if Russell Westbrook's not on the floor. Yeah. I don't care if they pay him to go home. I don't care if they trade him. If he's not on the floor, the Lakers will be a better team. That's just how I feel. It's how I felt before the trade. It's definitely how I feel after the trade. <laughs> Regardless of what happens after the trade, it's like, nah, it's correct. No, I'm talking about that. the Westbrook trade. Oh, like, I thought before you meant, the Westbrook trade, I felt that way. I thought you way. meant him leaving this time around. This time, no, no. It's, he was I'm like, I don't even, I don't even need now. to see what the new team's going to be like. Before, we'll the West, before the Westbrook trade, I was like 85% like, yeah, you can't yeah, win. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Yeah. After the trade, I'm like, oh, I'm 1,000% sure there's no chance of ever winning with Russell Westbrook as your point guard, especially paired next to LeBron James, of all people. Yeah, facts. So, people. here we are. No, but it's, this is what happens when you go down a, a route where – you're constantly throwing away your assets and you're not getting anything that you wish to sustain. Um, Leek and I had this conversation all the time about the Lakers and old school Lakers or how about they didn't care about picks necessarily. They're yeah. trade for proven stars and blah, blah, blah. But my whole counter is that when they made trades, they would keep the things that they did love. Like Lamar Odom is one of those pieces that's going to always, you know, be hanging around and stuff like that. It's like you're actually building towards something. So when you see... Brandon Ingram, D'Angelo Russell, um, Lonzo Kuzma, Ball, baby. Kyle Kuzma, Kuzma. That was the guy. That was the one. <laughs> but when you see like those three names that I just named, and then Kyle Kuzma is the one to stay because it fits the best next to Bron, or at least that's the explanation we were given. It's like you're not building to win completely in the future. You're just trying to reshuffle the deck every year. Like LeBron James. And like LeBron James, that does not work. Generally, he has some standardized core. It's him and two other guys, generally at least one other guy, ready to go. We can make a deep playoff run with this. LeBron James is 37 years old. There's no Kyrie Irving. Uh, we, we laughed at how Kyrie couldn't play a lot of games because of something that I sit here and say was 100% not necessarily in, in the fairness of him as an individual. Fair. Anthony Davis has been playing games because of injuries, and missing games is missing games. So when I look at this, this widespread new well, LeBron James' way of developing teams over the course since he got to the Lakers, it was going to get to this point, like inevitably. So I don't feel sad or sorry for the Lakers. I feel more sad and sorry for Russ, honestly, which is why I said if I'm Russ, I'm actually taking a different look at this. I feel sorry and I'm for nobody. But <laughs> but it, it is what it is at the end of the day. I mean, they they made their bed. Look what you did, guys. You scoring to Brian. He scorned him. Made him cry on the pod. <laughs> Brian prayed for y'all. <laughs> Man, caught the Holy Ghost. And I don't even think that might not help. <laughs> Look, man, we don't know what's happening with the Lakers, um, but I do know I will be watching it closely. Not because I care, but because I need something to pick me up after long days after work. I need something to laugh at. I need something to just make me smile. <laughs> and that's what the Lakers have become. But at least you're still relevant. You're not the Knicks. So yeah. you can have that. I don't know. I feel like fans feel the same. I feel like Knicks fans and Lakers fans, we both watch the games with like a bottle in our hand. <laughs> but, but you know you know what the difference is between us and Knicks fans? This is why I'd never argue with a Knicks fan. It's because Laker fans feel like we, that. Because we've, we've actually yeah, reached seen, them out. Yeah, I would say we've seen we've winning actually, multiple times in our you've life. You've experienced consistency. Consistent we know excellence. what excellence actually yeah. looks right. like. Yeah. So I know for us to demand on, yeah. excellence from our organization is one thing. Yeah. Y'all are demanding, Knicks fans are demanding competence from their organization. Yep. We are different. They're, like, they're demanding 40 <laughs> wins in a, in a season, and we're like, predicting 30. Like, 40 wins for us would be, like, the worst year I'll we've throw ever up. seen. Like, last year was horrible because we won 37 games. It was what? the same amount as the Knicks. Ugh. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ain't, ain't that crazy you get the same scores as the Knicks but everybody make fun of them exactly <sighs> alright y'all y'all let us know what y'all think about this trade y'all let us know what you think the Lakers should do next um, prayers up <laughs> um, should they uh, let Russell Westbrook stay home or should they offer that to him should they uh, move him how quick should they move him and for what at this point if there's anything left out there uh, we'd love to see all your fantasy trades in the comments um don't hurt us none we'll laugh at those too um yeah as always easily breathe the game we love you be safe we out
said that once already. I've, I've said it a couple times. Trey Brown.